One of my favorite moments of the first debate was this exchange between Tulsi Gabbard and Tim Ryan. Because when it comes to the issue of foreign policy, whenever that topic came up, we needed to hear from Tulsi Gabbard desperately because she is pushing the Overton window to the left within the Democratic Party, who has grown increasingly hawkish. And there's a lot of people who just aren't well-versed on U.S. imperialism. They don't know about U.S. interventionism. They fall for this trap, like Beto O'Rourke, of us needing to intervene for quote-unquote humanitarian reasons, which the United States always makes matters worse. So we needed to desperately hear from Tulsi Gabbard. And more importantly, we needed a moment that would allow her to demonstrate her knowledge on this subject. Particularly, um, or preferably rather, one where she calls out someone who's a hawk. And boy, did she deliver, because in this clip I'm about to play for you, she thoroughly dismantled the argument of Tim Ryan, who was pushing for intervention. And holy shit, she ripped him a new asshole. <laughs> Take a look. I've been in Congress 17 years, and 12 of those years I've sat on the Armed Services Committee, either the Defense Appropriations Committee or the Armed Services Committee. And the lesson that I've learned over the years is that you have to stay engaged in these situations. Nobody likes it, it's long, it's tedious, but right now we have, so I would say we must be engaged in this. We must have our State Department engaged, we must have our military engaged to the, st to the extent they need to be, but the reality of it is this president doesn't even have people appointed in the State Department to deal with these things. Whether we're talking about Central America, whether we're talking about Iran, whether we're talking about Afghanistan, we've got to be completely engaged. And here's why. Because these flare-ups distract us from the real problems in the country. If we're if getting a drone shot down for $130 million because the president is distracted, that's $130 million that we could be spending in places like Youngstown, Ohio, or Flint, Michigan, or, re that, or that, rebuilding, Congresswoman or Gabbard, rebuilding. I'm going to give you 30 seconds, actually, to jump off what, what he said. He will, described is engagement as the problem. Is that what you will tell the parents of those two soldiers who were just killed in Afghanistan? Well, we just have to be engaged. As a soldier, I will tell you, that answer is unacceptable. We have to bring our troops home from Afghanistan. We are in a place in Afghanistan where we have lost so many lives. We've spent so much money, money that's coming out of every one of our pockets, money that should be going into communities here at home, meeting the needs of the people here at home. We are no better off in Afghanistan today than we were when this war began. This is why it's so important to have a president and commander in chief who knows the cost of war and who's ready to do the job on day one. I am ready to do that job when I walk into the Oval Office. Thank you very much. Listen, I'm gonna go down the line. I'm gonna go down the I'm gonna go down the line. I'm gonna go down the line here. Well, you know what? You felt you felt like she was responding. You get 30 seconds. Go. Fair enough. I appreciate that. I hear what you're saying. I would just say I don't want to be I don't want to be engaged. I wish we were spending all this money in places that I've represented that have been completely forgotten and we were rebuilding. But the reality of it is if the United States isn't engaged, the Taliban will grow and they will have bigger, bolder terrorist acts. We have got to have some present there. As, the the as Taliban was Iraq. there long before we came in. They'll yeah, be and they there were, long yeah, before we exactly. leave. Well, we they cannot were. keep U.S. And troops they deployed flying. to Afghanistan thinking that we're going to somehow squash this Taliban I that has say, been there that every other country that's tried them. I didn't say failed. squash them. When we weren't in there, they started flying planes into our buildings. So I'm just saying right now, the we Taliban have The Taliban didn't attack us on 9-11. Al-Qaeda did. Well, I understand. Al-Qaeda attacked us on 9-11. I understand. That's why. I and so I many other people joined the military to go I after Al Qaeda, the not Taliban. the Taliban. The Go Taliban ahead, finish up 10 was seconds. protecting those people who were plotting against us. All I'm saying is, if we want to go in to elections and we want to say that we got to withdraw from the world, that's what President <laughs> Trump is saying. We okay. can't. I would love you know for us protecting to. protecting Al Qaeda right now I want to go Saudi down. Arabia. <laughs> That was so embarrassing for Tim Ryan. Like, he wasn't doing terribly throughout this debate, uh, but when he got that wrong and she called him out for it, I cringed for him because that's a moment you don't want to have. If you're trying to compete to be commander-in-chief, these really simple details here, you just don't want to mess them up. And 
she knows her shit when it comes to foreign policy. She's the best on this issue out of everyone. And when she strikes, she strikes hard. So we got a glimpse of how powerful Tulsi Gabbard could be. I want to see more of this because we need all of these hawks in the Democratic Party who are pushing for intervention and what he was pushing for was effectively never-ending war in Afghanistan. We need these people to be exposed as the hawks that they are. So Tulsi Gabbard here, she did phenomenally well. And I am so glad that this moment happened. Um, This was undoubtedly the best moment of the night for her. One of my favorite moments of the entire debate because it was that great. This was probably, besides all of the collective shitting on Beto, the, you know, one of the biggest moments of the night in terms of destroying someone. Like, if you want to come up with that cliche, X gets destroyed by Y in epic debate, this was basically that moment where somebody, they legitimately got destroyed and Tulsi handed him his ass. It was so glorious. Um, thank you, Tulsi, for that. I truly enjoyed every moment of it. However, someone who didn't enjoy <laughs> Tim Ryan getting destroyed is Tim Ryan, because immediately after the debate was over, his team put out this statement about the exchange. Quote, while making a point as to why America can't cede its international leadership and retreat from around the world, Tim was interrupted by Representative Tulsi Gabbard. When he tried to answer her, she contorted a factual point Tim was making about the Taliban being complicit in the 9-11 attacks by providing training bases and refuge for Al-Qaeda and its leaders. The characterization that Tim Ryan doesn't know who is responsible for the attacks of 9-11 is simply unfair reporting. Further, we continue to reject Gabbard's isolationism and her misguided beliefs on foreign policy. We refuse to be lectured by someone who thinks it's okay to dine with murderous dictators like Syria's Bashar al-Assad, who used chemical weapons on his own people. Now, on top of that, he told a reporter, I personally don't need to be lectured by someone who's dining with the dictator who gassed kids. Now, he's clearly angry and he's literally going out of his way to smear Tulsi Gabbard because she owned him, and he's being an incredibly sore loser. But I think that nothing will summarize the situation better than this. You just got owned, you noob. You just got owned, motherfucker. You just got, you just got, you just got owned. You just got owned, you noob. You just got Motherfucker, you just got, you just got, you just got owned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.